Imagine a volcano with the power to darken the skies around the world and change the course of human history. Now imagine that this volcano is not a high mountain in a remote forest, but hidden just below the mesmerizing landscapes of southern Italy. In the shadow of the famous Mount Vesuvius, right under the city of Naples, lies a gigantic supervolcano, Campi Flegre. This hidden giant has the potential to wreak havoc on a scale far exceeding Pompey's great renunciation, and scientists have long that he may be waking up from his sleep. Beneath the bay and towns west of Naples lies Campi Flegri. Named after the Italian word for burning fields, it is a vast underground volcano. Unlike volcanoes in the shape of a classic topic, Campi Flegre is an eruption. That is to say, it is a huge, goose-like depression formed by the collapse of the top of the volcano after a massive eruption. Instead of one big mountain, here is a volcanic field about 13 kilometers wide, with 24 craters and geysers belching sulfurous vapors. Many of these formations are hidden under the blue waters of the zoological gulf, or have been lost to urbanization. This makes it difficult to realize that you are standing on a volcano. It's hard to believe, but more than one and a half million people live on this volcanic complex, and about 500,000 people live directly inside the caldera. In comparison, Vesuvius, the volcano that destroyed Pompeii in 79 AD, is like a smaller cousin to this supervolcano. Campa Flegre lacks a single prominent peak, but don't be misled by this. This is among the most powerful volcanic systems globally, and according to numerous researchers, it might be the most dangerous volcano in all of Europe. To grasp why Campe Flegre is so terrifying, we must go back approximately 40,000 years. Back then, early humans and Neanderthals roamed Europe, until one day, the place in Italy erupted with unimaginable force. The Campe Flegre campaign produced the eruption known as Eginimbrite, it was the largest volcanic eruption Europe had seen in the last 200,000 years. This gigantic prehistoric eruption spewed hundreds of kilometers of cinder and rock. According to some estimates, an enormous amount of molten rock erupted from the Earth's crust. Picture a vast cloud of ash rising high into the sky and spreading widely across entire continents. This fallout blanketed large regions of Europe in ash and likely plunged the climate into a rapid onset of winter. Experts even believe that the eruption may have initiated a period of intense cooling, akin to the so-called year without a summer, that was experienced after the Tambora eruption in the year 1815, which resulted in global famines. At this juncture, you might be curious about why these supervolcanoes possess such immense power. While supervolcano isn't a formal scientific term, it refers to volcanoes capable of the most massive eruptions on Earth. Technically, a supervolcano is defined by an eruption rated level 8 on the Volcanic Eruption Index. This indicates it releases over 1,000 cubic kilometers of material at once. To put this in perspective, 1,000 cubic kilometers is 240 times the volume of Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. These eruptions are so large that they often form huge calderas. The ground above the emptied magma chamber collapses creating a giant crater tens of kilometers wide. Campi Flegrai's biggest eruption was just below this super eruption threshold. It was at the Vel 7 level, but other supervolcanoes in Earth's past have reached eight. A famous example is Yellowstone in the United States, often referred to as the textbook supervolcano. Yellowstone's largest known eruption, about two, one million years ago, spewed an astonishing 2,450 cubic kilometers of debris and left a caldera about 70 kilometers wide. Another is Toba in Indonesia. About 74,000 years ago, it erupted 2,800 cubic kilometers of magma, the world's largest eruption in the last two million years. These eruptions are hundreds of times more powerful than any other eruption in recent human history. They blanket continents in ash, send shockwaves globally, and release so much sulfur and ash that they can cool the planet. But what makes supervolcanoes so potent? The secret is in their magma chambers. 
These enormous molten rock reservoirs can gather over hundreds of thousands of years. Magma accumulates over time, along with dissolved volcanic gases. In a supervolcano, this chamber can span tens of kilometers. Think of it like a giant pressure cooker. The longer it boils, the more volume of dissolved gas and magma accumulates. If the pressure builds up enough and the rock above it can't hold it, the whole system can catastrophically explode. When this happens, the magma erupts violently as only the impermeable gas separates from the solution, shattering the magma into billions of tons of ash and pumice and hurling it into the sky. Calling Campi Flegre a supervolcano means that every eruption would be a disaster scenario. It's crucial to note, it didn't. Most eruptions at supervolcanoes are smaller than those catastrophic vate eruptions. You might wonder, if Campi Flegre was so violent long ago, what's it done lately? The volcano's last eruption was in 1538. Though small compared to prehistoric ones, it made history. For centuries before, the ground at Kaldradaki had been rising. This was a sign of increasing pressure below. Then, at 1538, the ground dramatically swelled to about 20 meters and finally erupted. The eruption lasted eight days and spewed so much ash and lava that it buried an entire village and created a new hill out of volcanic rubble. Today, this hill is known as Monte Nuovo, the new mountain. Imagine a new mountain literally erupting in your backyard. Back then, residents were shocked and horrified, yet in the grand scheme, 1538 was a minor eruption for Campi Flegre. It lasted about a week and eased some pressure in the underground magma system. Afterward, the massive volcano went silent. In fact, Campi Flegre hasn't erupted since 1538, but that doesn't mean it's resting peacefully. Over the past few decades, Campi Flegre has shown worrying signs of ongoing activity. Earth tremors often shake the area, with the ground rising and falling as if the volcano is breathing below. Since the 1950s, there have been times when the land at Caldir has bulged significantly upwards. This phenomenon is called bradicism or slow motion. In the early 1980s, the port town of Pozzuoli at the center of Caldera rose several meters in just a few years, causing cracks in buildings and roads. This alarming rise came with intense swarms of small earthquakes. At 1,983, the tremors became strong enough to cause structural damage. Thousands of residents were evacuated as authorities feared an explosion could be imminent. Then the ground lowered slightly and the emergency crisis situation passed, at least that one time. But the unrest continues today. The ground in Pozzuoli is now rising about 10 centimeters every year, and overall the region is roughly 4 meters more swollen than it was in the 1950s. What's currently happening there? The region has been in the news with more earthquakes and ground changes. Is Campi Flegre active again? If it is, what should we anticipate? The Italian government isn't taking any risks. In 2012, they raised the volcano's alert level from green to ordinary, marking it for active scientific observation. Scientists have set up a network of sensors, satellite trackers, and cameras around the caldera. They observe every vibration of the ground and every particle of volcanic gas leaking out. Research in the last few years has warned that magma deep inside is heating up and releasing gas, which increases pressure. One study found that the volcano may be approaching a critical outgassing pressure point where the rock above the magma could fracture, potentially leading to an eruption. In other words, the pressure cooker under Napoleon is heating up. And that leads us to the question, what if it explodes? The scenario no one in Naples wants to imagine, but must consider, is an eruption at Tampi Flegrai. The impact scale depends on the explosion size. Tampi Flegrai could erupt in various ways, from small lava to ash-producing explosions, or worst, another catastrophic caldera event. Let's examine the risks in detail. If an eruption occurs in the coming years, 
the most likely scenario would be a medium-sized eruption, similar to or slightly larger than the 1538 Montenovo eruption, i.e. an eruption at level 3 or 4 on the Volcanic Eruption Index. Even a medium-sized eruption could have catastrophic consequences given the population density. Immediate local impacts would include heavy ashfall and pyloclastic flows. There is a designated red zone in the heart of Campi Filegre Caldera, where about 500,000 inhabitants live. These people are at the highest risk of exposure to pyloclastic flows. Ploclastic flows are extremely hot avalanches of ash and gas that can move at hundreds of kilometers per hour. These flows can travel several kilometers. Communities around Pozzuoli and western Naples could therefore be devastated if such flows occur. Ash would likely cover the city of Naples and much of the surrounding region, potentially depositing ash theft to collapse roofs, contaminate water supplies, and paralyze transportation. A risk analysis by the researchers considered a hypothetical, relatively modest V3 eruption in Campi Flegrai with, say, dramatic effects. Approximately 2.5 million people would be affected by two semen of ash. This layer of ash can disrupt transport, clog machinery, and need major cleanup. 144,000 people would be in areas receiving about 25 centimeters of ash. Such an ash layer could lead to structural damage, like collapsed roofs. Around 200,000 people might face pyroclastic density currents. This term includes both intense pyroclastic flows and volcanic surges, which are less dense but still lethal. For those obstructing these currents, consequences will likely be fatal and structures will be destroyed. Besides these direct impacts, there are other dangers Part of the Tampi filigree is under the Gulf. An explosive eruption with water could trigger a Tasuna Maliri in the Napolic Gulf. Nearby islands and coastal areas might be affected by such waves. This could add another catastrophe on top of the eruption. There is also the issue of volcanic gases. An eruption would release large quantities of gases such as sulfur dioxide. Although the climate cooling effects of gases occur high in the atmosphere, at ground level, they can cause suffocation or acid rain. Even in the absence of an explosion, high levels of carbon dioxide in the area have caused some incidents in the past. For example, 2017, a sudden release of carbon dioxide from a mud pool in Solfatara tragically killed some visitors, led to the explosion. During an eruption, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide would increase local health risks and air quality in the wider region could reach dangerous levels. On a larger scale, if Tampi Flegrai were to experience a large eruption, i.e. a V-scale eruption of magnitude 6 or 7, the consequences would extend far beyond Italy. Such an eruption would hurl ash into the upper layers of the atmosphere, potentially disrupting climate patterns. A volcanic event similar to Mount Penatubo's 1991 eruption at magnitude V5 could cause global cooling for a year or two. Campiflegre's eruption might also disrupt aviation. Remember the Icelandic volcano eruption in 2010 that stopped flights across Europe? Tampfiligre could be far worse. Experts believe an ash-rich eruption from Tampafiligre would likely exceed the 2010 Icelandic event, severely affecting European air travel, would pose a significant risk, he mentions. However, not every situation leads to a disaster scenario. There is also a chance that Tampi filigree might have a minor eruption or simply release pressure gradually. Volcanoes can alleviate pressure by increasing fumarole activity, which means releasing gas and steam, or through small eruptions that don't escalate. Ideally, Tampa Frigre could return to a calm state after a period of unrest, similar to what occurred in the 1980s. But because the stakes are high, one must hope for the best and prepare for the worst. This dilemma of high impact but low probability is what makes planning for supervolcanoes so difficult. So is this supervolcano about to erupt? Probably not tomorrow or next month, but it is restless and that in itself demands attention. Campi Flegrai has surprised humanity before and certainly has the power to surprise it again. Our task is to respect this power 
be aware of the scientific data, and be prepared. Whether you are a science enthusiast who thinks about volcanic monitors or someone who lives in Naples and carefully watches the Flegre fields, the Campi Flegre, this gigantic volcano is a constant reminder of the power and change of the dynamic planet on which we live.